We live in glory and honor. We put our hands together. And we give you the most high praise.
just want I just want you to see my heart right now. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you, love you, love you, love you. I love you, Jesus. I love and adore you. I just want. from afar off and your daughters being carried on the nurse's hips then you will see and be radiant your heart will throb and swell with delight for the riches of the seas the Gentiles will be brought to you the wealth of nations will come to you you may have your seat our topic for today is living the risen life. Yes. Living. Thank you. Living the risen life. What does it mean when he says arise and shine? 
Amen. Amen. For the light has come. We know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And oftentimes, especially in times of darkness, that's when his light shines the brightest. Is that right? Amen. And so here the Isaiah, the Messianic prophet, the prophet that saw more about Jesus, his coming, his birth, uh, even his conception in Isaiah. Amen. We look at that scripture that a virgin shall conceive. Amen. And bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. So Isaiah here, speaking of the unction of the Spirit of God, talks to Jerusalem, Jerusalem and, uh, and encourages to arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Do you know glory is heavy? <laughs> Yes. When you talk yes. about yes. the glory yes. of the Lord, the weight of the, the Lord, amen. And it says, is risen upon thee, amen. amen. For behold, darkness shall cover. We're living in a time when I know you would agree with me that if there's ever been a time that we have seen darkness mm -hmm. in our country mm -hmm. and even in the world, yeah. we're seeing it right now. When people have decided they don't want to believe in God, they don't want God's word, they don't want God's ways. When people have decided, um, I don't want to be this gender, I don't want to be what God made me to be, darkness is covering the earth. Yes. When politicians no longer honor the law and justice, but go with whatever right to get them in office, darkness is covering the earth. Yes. When women continue to kill over six million babies in our nation alone yeah. the earth is covered with darkness yeah. and most of all when the people that know their god the people who are supposed to be christians yeah. and saints of the most high god yeah. have decided well it doesn't fit the current culture all right so i'm going to do things a different way. Mm -hmm. yes. I'ma get in where I can fit in so I can be voted in. Yes. The earth is covered with darkness. Amen. But thank God. Hallelujah. But it said, but the Lord shall arise. Mm -hmm. yes. Adonai, our God, hallelujah, yes. shall arise upon thee, hallelujah. and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yes. And even the Gentiles, mm -hmm. the Goyim, mm -hmm. those of us who were not born amen, as children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but were born again mm -hmm. because of the seed of Abraham, yes. which is Yeshua HaMessiah, mm -hmm. the yes. Christ of God. Yes. And the Gentiles shall see, mm -hmm. shall come to thy light, because they're going up there looking, so there's somebody right now looking for some light. Is yes. that right? Yes. In the midst of all this darkness, there's some, everybody don't want to go to hell, y'all. Amen. Everybody, not, everybody does not decide that this God is their God. But there are people who are searching mm -hmm. in their heart. And that's where we come in as the people of God, yes. pointing them to our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's go on. Amen. It says, lift up your eyes round and about. Mm -hmm. Because kings are coming to the rising mm -hmm. of the light of God. I looked at the coronation mm -hmm. of King Charles and something stirred in me. Because remember, all the kings of the earth are going to have to come to him. Come on. They're going to lay their... Their crowns right. at his feet. Yes. But there's no king like our king. Amen. Look at somebody and say, King Jesus. King Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God yeah. and our king. Yeah. And they're going to come to the brightness of thy rising. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Yeah. Glory. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light mm -hmm. and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Mm -hmm. So lift up thine eyes round and about. Amen. Yes. All that gather and see, all that gather themselves together, mm -hmm. they shall come to you. Amen. Yes. Thy sons shall come from afar, mm -hmm. and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Mm -hmm. Then thou shalt see mm -hmm. and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged for the abundance of the sea. Mm -hmm. 
shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Mm -hmm. And when did this prophetic word come to pass? All right. When the Messiah came. Yeah. Amen. And we see it manifestations with the coming, amen, uh, the Aliyah, where all of the Jews from the four corners of the earth have now returned to Israel. Yes. And their sons and their daughters came from afar, mm -hmm. from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Yes. And God is fulfilling the prophetic word for our time. Yes. So how do we live the risen life? Mm -hmm. Go with me to the Colossians, and we're going to look at the third chapter. Isaiah made it very plain that at the coming of the Christ, mm -hmm. that, amen, the light of God would come. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Mm -hmm. No man comes to the Father yes. except by me. Amen. So why are there so many who prefer the darkness? And I want to say something uh, for those who have people that are in your family or your loved ones, your neighbors, friends. I want you to invite them to step out of the darkness yes. Yes. and into the marvelous light. Is that right? Yeah. So the word of God makes it very plain because somebody can't even find their way out. Colossians, the third chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. And our text is going to come from here. So take your time and stay here for a while. If you've got a pen and paper, amen. You need to write some list of down. And Sarah, you make the adjustment to pull it down a little bit. Yes, there you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 and 1. If... You then be risen with Christ. Yes, yes. If, the word if is conditional. If, if, if you've been risen yes. with Christ. Sometimes we need to ask ourselves that. Hallelujah. If you've been risen. If you're shown up saved. If you, if you know that you know that you know that for sure. When you leave this earthly body, mm -hmm. you're going to go right to the presence of the Lord. Yes. If you then be risen with Christ, seek mm -hmm. those things which are above. Mm -hmm. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yes. Now, you, you, you got to set your affection. Remember I was talking about last week about a mindset. Yes. Well, what is your affections? Your feelings, your emotions, the things that give you pleasure, the things that you desire. Do you get pleasure from God? Yes. Do you love him so much that it's just a pleasure being in his presence? I don't know about you, but there is something that happens when the glory of God rests upon you. And it's like, there's a pleasure that you can't get from nothing else. I don't care how much you enjoy, amen, the things that you do. I, I, there's a lot of things. I, I enjoy reading, writing. I enjoy cowboy movies. Amen. I, I enjoy a lot of things, especially especially the rifle man. I, I, but the rifle man cannot com compare right. to Jesus. Is that right, Pastor? The rifle man ain't got nothing on, on Jesus. There's a lot of things that we, we enjoy, a lot of things, going to the lake, having dinner with a friend. Amen. There's so many things that can give us pleasure. But your affections should always be to the one who created you. And so he said, set. In other words, make sure that you position and posture yourself before God, that God knows that he's the love of your life. He's the lover of my soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even to the point where in him I live and move and have my being. Nobody and nothing can compare to Jesus. I'm going to say it again. Nothing and nobody. That's why we sing that song, Can't Nobody Do You Like Jesus. Yeah. So set your your affection on things right above, not on things of the earth. Yes. Everything on this earth is temporary. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. And the things on this earth don't last long. Mm -hmm. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about living the risen life. Mm -hmm. Well, that old nature, that old life is dead. You're dead. That, listen, Joyce Marie, that prima donna jazz singer, she don't exist anymore. Now, every now and then she tries to step, you know, step into it, and, and every now and then I knock on the door, especially when I hear something from one of my 
Yeah, uh-huh. Sarah doing like this, because she know that was my that was my groove when I was grooving. Amen. I, I don't do that no more. When you see me now, I lift my hands. Come on, come on. Boy, say, lift up, lift up your hands. Amen. Without without wrath and without doubt. When Christ, who is our life, somebody say he's my life. He shall appear, then shall you also appear with him glory. Because this is just not, we're passing through, but he's coming back for us. And he's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. Now, let me just say something about being risen with Christ. That adversary don't want you to go forward in the things that God has called you to do. So when he when when Colossians, when Paul is talking to the church at Colossae, he's really encouraging them, if you want to go higher in God, you gotta set your, you know, like a thermos hat is set and it's cold. Amen. There's something about when you set that thermos hat. If you set it at 75, what is it gonna do? It's gonna rise until it gets what? Set, now is it gonna go any higher than 75? No, uh uh, because you set it at what? 75. So if you're, so think about the thermostat of your soul. Or think about the thermostat of your spirit. Where is it set? Amen. Do, have you set your view and your goals on seeing Christ? Amen. Where, where have you set your thermostat, your spiritual thermostat? Because every round goes what? Higher and higher. So it says set your affection on things above. Now, that doesn't mean for you to be so heavily minded that you know earthly good. I ain't talking about that. Because you need to still serve the Lord while you're in this tabernacle. You need to occupy till you come. Because God knows you're uprising, you're down sitting, you're going in and you're coming out. He knows the way that you take. And he knows your thoughts, what, are far off. But he wants you to set your affection on him. Is he the lover of your soul? Thus, you know, when, when Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things, that earthly things that we see here that you want or you desire. You know, if you set your, your affections on him, I guarantee you God will hear your heart's desire. Now, he already promised I'm going to meet every one of your needs. You don't have to. Listen, when God said he's going to meet your needs, he's not a man that he should lie. For my God shall supply all of our need according to what? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So he has, more, everybody say, more than enough. More than enough. Amen. But there's some things that he wants us to do so that we will be so in tune with him that when our heart, let me tell you, in a scripture in Jeremiah said, before you speak, he hears you. Do you know that God can hear you before your words even come on your lips? Amen. He said he knows your thoughts are far off. Well, he also knows your needs are far off. I'm going to say it again. He knows your thoughts are far off. And somebody say it with me. He knows my needs are far off. Amen. I ain't got to always tell the Lord. Sometimes he'll do it because he knows what you have need of. So that's going to be. So the enemy wants to defeat you. And these are some of the things he wants to defeat you. Or how he wants to defeat you. First of all, we have a, God has a plan for us. And when we apply the plan, we overcome every obstacle, every trial, every dilemma, and every test, amen, that the enemy tries to throw at us to try to keep us uh, so that we can, listen, sometimes go over the cliff. But you ain't got to go over no cliff. But now unto him was able to keep you from falling, able to present you what? Faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Amen. With exceeding joy. So the fifth verse. Amen. Gives us instruction. Mortify. Put to death. Therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Inordinate affection. Evil compensations. Conventiousness which is idolatry. And unnatural desires. Amen. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. But if the word of God is the final authority over your life. And when you set your affections, you won't have time or affections or an affinity to desire ungodly things. In the which you also walk sometimes when you live in them, but you're now living the risen life. Somebody say, I'm now living the risen life. But now you also put off all these things. So the church of Colossae, Paul is saying, put these off as well. 
You also put off these anger. Because the Bible said be angry with what? Sin not. Sin not. Wrath. Wrath is anger on steroids. Malice, having hard feelings. God wants you to release people, amen, from their faults and what they've done to you. Amen. Blasphemy. Using God's name in vain. You don't, amen. Listen, if you find that someone has hurt you, amen, God don't want you cussing them out. Amen. Filthy communication out of your mouth. We, listen, saints don't cuss. I, everybody say it with me. Saints don't cuss. Saints don't cuss. I, you notice I didn't say curse. I said cuss. Because when we get mad, we don't just, we ain't even thinking about cursing for we just cuss. No, we don't do that. That don't fit in your spiritual behavior resume. That doesn't represent. We're to bless. Somebody say bless. Bless. Amen. We bless people. Don't we don't cuss them out. Right. Amen. Because right. your tongue, amen, the, the power of death and life is where? Amen. amen. Set a guard by your tongue that you won't sin with your mouth. And lie not one to another. Seeing that you put off the old man with his deeds. Well, you know, to the lie is to uh, not only deceive someone, but you're avoiding the truth. And the truth is what makes people free. Amen. So don't lie because then you, you're trying to bind them and keep them from being free. Did, did you ever think about a lie like that? Sometimes lies will keep people bound. Amen. Amen. And no liars are going to come before and they ain't entering into heaven. The Bible said the liars ain't coming in. Say this with me, liars are friars. Amen. And then put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created. See, you've been so transformed as Paul told the Romans, be not, what did he say, be not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and what? Perfect will of God. Amen. So you're renewed a, in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. You put on that new, that, 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 the, the new, the new you. Somebody say the new me. Amen. The new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creation. All things pass away. And behold, all things have become new. Because you're living the risen life. You're no longer in a spiritual lowly bar. Do you know the adversary's main plan is to keep you bound and back and down? Now, let me break that down for you. Okay. You're living a risen life. So what does the enemy try to do to interfere? First of all, he tries to hold you back. Look at somebody and say, don't let them hold you back. Don't, don't, let, them hold you don't back. let the enemy hold you back. Hold you back for what? For the great things that God has in store for you. God has some great things. God has blessings for you. Eyes have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered to the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for you. God has blessings beyond anything you can ask, even imagine. Young people, God has a future for you. He has a plan for you. There's some things that God has to do, wants to do for you. Yes. And nobody else can do it. And yes, education is good. Yes. But there's some things that God, that education can't give you, that God can give you. Right. Amen. Right. A future. Everybody say a future. future. And, a and a hope. Those are God's plans. An expected end. A future and a hope. Now, look what else he says. And this, this should bless you. Amen. He wants you to have his knowledge. Because when you know what God, when, when God's knowledge is known, you know, if you don't know what to do, then, you know, you limit yourself in your ability to fulfill God's destiny. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn. And do what? Learn. And do what? Learn. Learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. And you'll find the rest you need for your soul. So you'll stop having struggles trying to figure out what God is trying to tell you to do because he said, take my yoke. Sometimes we yoke up with the wrong people. Sometimes we yoke up with the wrong thing and that thing gets heavy. But God said, my yoke is easy and my burdens are light and you're going to rest in me. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. And rest in him. Lay down your, I used to love that song. I'm going to lay down my burdens 
down by the river side. You know why they were singing the river? They were talking about the water, by the spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm going to lay down my, I'm going to give that burden and study war no more. Yes. Amen. Because you've been warred in your spirit. But look what he says. Amen. Let go of all these things. Lie not one to another. Put off that old man. Amen. With his deeds. And you've put on the new man. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Which is renewed in knowledge. Your knowledge has to come up. Because of the enemy, like I said, he's trying to hold you back. And what's the next thing? He's trying to hold you down. Right. Now, what happens, now we're talking about living a risen life. So if the enemy's trying to hold you down, mm -hmm. he's trying to keep you from moving forward right. in what God has for you. Mm -hmm. So, amen, you are, you've been risen in Christ. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I've been risen in Christ. Been risen in Christ. So, I, you, so the adversary does not have the authority to hold you down. But you got to make sure that you don't get in agreement by having the, not having the not lacking the knowledge that you need, right. so that you can say, "Oh no, this don't look like God at all. Mm -hmm. This is not God is not trying to hold me back. Yeah. He's not trying to hold me down." Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, He is the lifter upper of your head. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If He's trying to keep you back from going forward, Paul said, "Press in what?" Forward. He said, "For the prize of what? The mark, the mark of the high calling of God." Yeah. He said, "I press for. I press toward yeah. the mark." For the prize card. The, the, amen. amen. It's a high calling. High call. So he ain't trying to keep you down. Amen. He's, it's a high calling. He's trying to lift you up. Yes. Amen. amen. So be lifted up. Look at somebody say, be lifted up. Be lifted up. Now, let's go on. So enemy tries to hold you back, hold you down, and keep you from going forward or, be, or rising up to the level that God has for you. Now, let's go on to, amen, and I, I love this. In, uh, let's drop down with me to the 14th verse. Amen. 13th verse, rather. Look what he says here. Because you are the elect of God. I'm going to read 12 too. Let's just start 12 and go on down because it's connecting what my thought is for today living a risen life. So put therefore, put therefore as the elect of God. You're chosen and beloved of God, y'all. So what? Put therefore, amen, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy, yeah. kindness. Yeah. Are, are you full of mercy? Mm -hmm. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Yeah. See God. Yeah. Amen. Kindness. Yeah. It's a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Humbleness of mind. Not arrogant, not proud, mm -hmm. not high-minded, but humbleness. Yeah. Humility before honor. Mm -hmm. And then meekness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness makes you so attractive. Yeah. Right. I want you to look at somebody and say, when you're meek, you're so attractive. <laughs> Meekness is attractive. Amen. Kindness is attractive. Amen. Amen. And you will draw to yourselves. Amen. When you're meek and kind. Long suffering. Being able to hang on there. Sometimes you gotta, amen, go another mile. My my dad is Blackfoot Indian as well as African American. And my father used to talk to us about when we were growing up, how to treat people and how not to treat people. And part of his, uh, Mama Stella, his great grandma, I mean his grandmother, uh, taught them if you, if, if you walk a mile with a man, you may not get to really know him because the sun might be shining and it might be a gentle breeze blowing and you're talking and you're starting to learn a little bit about that person. Mm -hmm. But when you really go through a storm with people, mm -hmm. and that might have to be an extra mile. Mm -hmm. Somebody say you gotta go an extra mile. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen, and sometimes not only go an extra mile to really find out, because as you were saying in Sunday school, Dr. Greer, amen, about how, amen, it's easy, hallelujah, when everything is going well with people. Amen. But when things go wrong, how do you conduct yourself yeah. when things, let me just say it like this, Trina, a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> when things are a hot mess, how in the world are you going to conduct yourself? How are you going to handle yourself, Brother Stan, in the midst of a hot mess? Are you going to change your attitude? So sometimes you got to go an extra mile with people. Amen. But even when you're going through with them and learning them, holding them up. Look what it says in that 13th verse. Forbearing 
one another and forgiving one another. And if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And Agape Love Bible College and Agape Love members at home that are streaming, you're welcome. I love you. Amen. Know that you would and get your communion ready. Amen. Amen. I meant to say that at the beginning. But there's something about your ability to forgive. Yes. It is so forgiveness is one of the most powerful characteristics because that's what God had to do. Is that right, Minister Bruce? Yes. That's what God did when He forgave us and yes. sent his son to be a ransom yes. and the propitiation. When Jesus yes. died on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's the most powerful thing that we can do. And Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. Yes. Amen. Obedience is the most sincere form of worship. Yes. If you love me, obey me. Forgive, forgive, forgive those who despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you. Forgive them, no matter what they did to you. It's so, to live a risen life, to, risen, to live a higher life, you got to be a person that's willing to forgive. If you want to have fellowship with the king one day, can you imagine all them, them fancy clothes and the, the, the coronation, everybody was dressed in their, their amen, their fancy outfits. I was just looking at that on TV. The king, and now they, they even have to have a kingly tea. They don't just, now I like chamomile. I like, I like chamomile, amen. And I like uh, ginger tea. And I drink a lot of rose hips because rose hips has hibiscus and hibiscus brings your blood pressure down. Just a note out there, somebody got high blood pressure. <laughs> Hibiscus, it's rose hips, mm -hmm. a amen. So they're gonna drink a kingly tea, mm -hmm. but, the t but the leaves on the tree is for the healing of the nation. Oh. Right. Amen, the leaves on the tree. So no matter what, when God heals you, yeah. when you drink from his fountain, yes. you're drinking that, that, that higher life. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's why Jesus said, amen. Yes. Uh, if you would have asked me, told the woman at the well, I would have given you. I would have given you living water. Yeah. Now, let's go on. And it said, above all these things, and above all these things, put on love. Put on love. Yeah. So you can't really say you love God if you don't, if you don't love your brother. Yeah. Do you know you have the innate ability because of the agape yeah. love that's dwelling in you to love anybody? Mm -hmm. I have the ability to love my enemies. Have I been tested with that? Many times. Yeah. Now, that don't mean you can go out and have lunch with them. I say you got to go and call them up and say, what you doing next week? You know? But what I'm saying is you release them. You, you forgive them. You see them as valuable as a human being that needs forgiveness because you think about your own self. Amen. And, and, and listen, if you really love God, you don't want nobody to go to hell. You know, back in the day when we wasn't saved and we would get angry and sometimes we would say that hell word and you would give people direction to get there? Uh-uh. We don't do that no more. No, no. Mm -hmm. You want to forgive yeah. as Christ forgave you. Amen. And so he says, above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Yeah. If you want to be perfect, remember Jesus said, and be ye perfect as your Father in heaven. Yeah. Be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. Yeah. Be perfect. Well, he's not talking about you're going to be perfect in everything you do, but mature. Yes. Make sure that you mature enough to say, I, I'm going to release the person. I've done this long enough. Yes. I've done this long yes. enough. Been there. Yes. Never, I say this, been there, done that. Yes. Amen. How many of you ready for a change? Yes. Hallelujah. And you know what? When you, when you release people, you get lighter. Yes. Your spirit get lighter. Yes. Have you ever had a good cry? Amen. And you feel lighter. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. There's something about when you just release it all. Hallelujah. Forgive them all. Yeah. It's a blessing. Amen. We ain't got much time. So let's keep on reading here. Because I want to get to Ephesians before we close. And let now look what it said. And let the peace of God allow it. Allow the peace of God to rule your heart. He told the Philippian church that too, didn't he? Yeah. The church at Philippi. He said, let the peace of God rule, umpire your heart. To the which also you are called in what? One body. And be ye thankful. Thankful people are grateful people and they're teachable people. They're, and they're reachable people and they're blessable people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. Thankful people are grateful people. They're reachable. They're teachable. And they're blessable. Amen. 
When you're faithful, you will bring to yourself, you will draw to yourself, you will attract, amen. You'll be blessable. You'll be, uh, amen. You can't help but be grateful when you're faithful. Amen. And God will extend the blessing upon you. Just because of your faithfulness. Being faithful to God for everything he's done. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. As a matter of fact, I, I, I challenge y'all to try to name at least 100 things that God has done that you're thankful about. I'm not saying right now, but when you go home, write a, a list from 1 to 100. And see if you can think of at least 100 things that God has done for you. I'm going to challenge you. And let me know next Sunday if you have thought about at least 100 things. I mean, we the old folks used to start off saying, I thank God for the activities of my, my limbs. And then I'm in my right mind. And listen, until you get over 50, you don't even know what that means. Because young people used to say, I know when I was young, and I heard an old say, say, I thank God for being in my right mind. And I used to say, well, what kind of mind? <laughs> what kind of mind they talking about their right mind but they weren't just talking now listen they weren't just talking about uh, cognitive ability they you know that they woke up and they knew their name or no, they were also talking about right mind and serving God amen so they sang that song I told y'all that's why I like that song what's the song I like to sing about good morning yeah they, they woke up with their right mind and then they say, and the activities of my limb. Yes. Now, when you ain't never had no problem with the activities of your limb, you can't relate. You might All not right. think that that's something to be thankful for. But you know what? When I couldn't walk, right. guess what happened? When I got my ability to walk back, I can add that to my list. Right. I can Amen. add that to my list. Amen. 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 And so some of y'all, y'all might say, well, you know what? That's right. I remember I had, when I was in my 20s, I had, when I was going to college, I, uh, there was something called mononucleosis. Is that, am I saying it right? Mononucle, am I saying it right? Mononucle, yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of an infection you got from, they call it the kissing disease. I don't think I kissed nobody to get it, but I remember I had to take some an antibiotics, you know. But I remember being faithful because as a, when I was in school and I sang to, you know, to, to bring in extra income, I needed my vocal cords. And guess what? I had vocal nodules. Mm -hmm. and, when, and if you never lost your voice, has anybody here ever lost their voice? I'm not talking about laryngitis. I'm talking about you, lost, you couldn't talk for a while. Mm -hmm. Were you glad when you got your voice back? Wow. You were faithful. <laughs> Say it again, honey. You were faithful. So if you, but see, now if none of y'all have ever had laryngitis or mononucleosis, you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But all of that stuff, I, I had a, a severe th sore throat. I couldn't talk. And when you are, uh, a person that uses your voice, you're faithful. Yeah. Some of y'all can think about some of the things that, that you, you know, one thing I found about loss, it gives you the ability to appreciate what you have. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. When you've lost anything, mm -hmm. amen, whether it was a friend, a relationship, a parent. Mm -hmm. Now next week, and I want to encourage all of those who are listening, we're going to be celebrating our mothers. And some of us have lost our mothers, but I'm gonna celebrate those who are mothers here. So I want to just encourage you to come. Amen, we're gonna have our Mother's Day service here. And uh, I want Tanya, amen. Are you going ready to speak this time? I hope she's ready to speak. Last year she wasn't ready. Okay, all right. All right, we'll see you next week. She might be able to speak, amen. Amen, to have some words, amen. Some of y'all, all y'all mothers get ready. Amen, because I want y'all to share in the, there's something about being a mother. Yeah. Every mother raise your hand. And the Lord bless these mothers. Bless these mothers. Bless these mothers. Bless the mother. Let, all right, there, right. Yeah. Bless, yeah. I'm talking to the mothers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You're the gatekeepers. Look at somebody and say, "Look, I, I, I want the, the everybody here that's not a mother, and if you're not a man, I know you're not. Just say, y'all are the gatekeepers. Y'all the, yeah, the gatekeepers of this life." Amen. You're a gatekeeper of, of, of you're a gatekeeper. Amen. They can't listen. Nobody can get in, come to this earth without without you. Amen. It's a blessing to be a mother. Now let's go on. I don't know how I got up on all that. I must have been to. Amen. But look what he said. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
And whatsoever, somebody say whatsoever, whatsoever. you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks, giving what? Thanks. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Just a, just a few more scriptures in Ephesians. Go with me to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to close here in the book of Ephesians. Uh, the church at Ephesus was a very mature church. They, they had some issues, and we see that in Revelations at the seven churches of Asia. They had, first, they had lost their uh, first love, but God told challenging them to get their first love back. Yeah. Or living a risen life, you keep you stay in love with Jesus. Somebody say, stay in love with Jesus. Stay in love with Jesus. Now, Jesus loves you so much that it's just so important that one way to stay in love with Jesus and to keep living that risen life is to be dressed in the arm of God. Yeah. So let's run through this real quick. Ephesians 6. Ten verse. Ephesians 6, 10 verse. Amen. Finally, my brother, be strong where? In the Lord. Not in your strength, but in the Lord. The Bible said, uh, Jesus said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Amen. So let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Let the bowed say, I'm free. Amen. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against these principalities, uh, these powers of darkness, wiles of the devil. For we, and schemes, and plots, and uh, amen. The enemy comes to manipulate. I want to read this in the Hebrew Bible. Amen. I want to read this to you in the Hebrew Bible concerning the plots and the manipulations of the adversary. Because principalities and powers are always looking for an opportunity to win. But guess what? Greater is he that's where? In us. Than he that's where? In the world. So when we talk about how the adversary tries to come, he comes to, what is this MO, y'all? Kill, steal, and destroy. But what did Jesus say? I've come that you might have, you might have what? Life. Amen. And have it what? More so no matter what the motive is, and no matter what takes plans to come against you, is always remember that what God says is the final authority over your life. Write that down. What God says about you is the final authority over your life. Okay, so listen to this, and I'm reading from the Hebrew Bible. Finally, grow powerful in union with the Lord, in union with his mighty strength. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive mm -hmm. tactics of the adversary. Mm -hmm. For we're not struggling against human beings. Right. Amen. Amen. But against rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers Governing this darkness. Remember, we talked about that darkness. Mm -hmm. Covering the earth. Yeah. Against the spiritual forces. My, 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 my. Spiritual forces of evil in the what? Heavenly realm. In the heavenly realm. Amen. If you're dressed, you're going to be able to do You can't, you may not be able to see them, but you can feel them and sense them and you can see their work. So if someone is around you who's bound and demons are messing with their mind, you ought to bring them to church. Yes. They ain't going to get set free watching. All right. Amen. Come on, come on. Listen, come on, come on. I, 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 like, I like watching a good movie too, but I know that that ain't going to get me delivered. Right. Amen. I need to be where the power is. Yes. I need the word of God that destroys you every yoke and removes every burden. Is that right? Yes. If they want to be free, and if they don't want to be free, they don't come. They ain't really serious, and don't waste your time mm -hmm. casting your pearls before a swine. We had for ten about ten years. Well, was it ten years, Cheryl? Well, let's, let's say at least five. I don't want to exaggerate, but for five or six years, we had the same person that called here oh, every yeah. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I found out later that he wasn't just calling Agape, he was calling other churches, I don't name other churches. But he was, he was on cue. Sure now, is this pastor? I said, yeah, this pastor? I said, yeah, this pastor Dixon. I got, let me start, I got 10 more demons in me. I be cussing, I be drinking, I'm fornicating, I'm lying, I be trying to cure. He would just go through his list. Then he said, I let some of them, nobody really believed me until I, I even let, um, 
they'll, they'll minister down the street. You know, one of our alumni. Right, right. See, I let him. He said, I said, you talk to him. He told him the same thing. He said, Pastor, how do I make all them demons? And then I, I finally, said, no, I got tired of calling. I said, you know what? Because he wouldn't come. He just called me. And I said, now look. Cast all, you know all those demons in you? Yeah, Pastor, I know all the demons. That, those are all the ones I can think of that I know of. I said, then since you know them so well, cast them out. Right. Put, right. You put them out. Amen. Since you know you, you know them, right. I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that. Mm -hmm. I said, you put them out. Take authority. Take authority over them. Because cause one thing he was was consistent. I ain't heard from him lately. I may have just talked him up. I don't know. Amen. But so look what so look what he said. We're done. Just about. Okay. So take up every piece of war equipment. Put on the full armor of God. Take so take up, get suited and booted. Write that down. Get suited and booted. So take for the rest of life, you're gonna have to be suited and booted. So take about every piece of war equipment God provides. So that when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist. And when the battle, look what it said, when the battle is won, you'll still be standing. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. You'll still, when it's all over, when the shout, amen. When it's all over but the shout, you'll still be standing. Yes. Therefore, stand. Have the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Yes. Put on righteousness for a breastplate. We talked about the rewards of righteousness. Yes. What the Bible said, you've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither are men. They're, they're, they're seen begging for bread. Yes. Amen. God will uphold the righteous with his righteous right arm. Amen. Put on the right, put on righteousness for a breastplate. Yes. And wear on your feet the readiness that comes from the good news of shalom. Mm -hmm. The good news, amen, mm -hmm. of the gospel. Always carry the shield of trust. Faith. And King James said faith. But always carry the shield of trust with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Right. Take the helmet of deliverance. Amen. Along with the sword of the word of God, given by the spirit, that is the word of God. Yes. Amen. Have your sword ready to do battle. Because all you got to do is say to the Lord, rebuke him. Yes. And you remember when Jesus fought the, remember, he didn't have to fight nothing. God don't have to fight with nothing he made. Amen. But for our sakes, amen, with that temptation, his temptation, you know, what did Jesus say? It is written. It is written. Use the sword of the word of God in your mouth. Yes. It is written. It is written. Amen. The devil trying to mess with your mind, it is written. Thou shalt keep me in perfect peace. The devil trying to make you feel sick, amen. Remember, I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Lord said, healing is the children's bread. When you, when you have lack, my God shall supply all of my need. But I know that God gives pleasure out of the prosperity of his children. When you feel lonely, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Find out what God's word, every word of God has an answer. Amen. Now look what he says. Amen. Pray at all times mm -hmm. with all kinds of prayers and requests in the spirit yes. diligently and persistently for all God's people. See, we're, this is not, we're not a selfish people. Right. We're a God-loving, God-honoring yes. and God-worshiping yes. people and we yes. also extend that mm -hmm. to others. We extend the grace, mm -hmm. amen, to others. And pray for me too that whenever I open my mouth, the words will be given to me to be bold and make it known the secret of the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might speak boldly the way that I should. So what is, what is this risen life all about? God wants you to advance, mm -hmm. to go forward. Remember, the enemy wants to hold you back, but God is challenging you. Go forward. Yes. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Defeating the powers of darkness simply by the word of God and your armor dress for battle. Mm -hmm. amen. Amen. Gird your, amen. Gird your loins. Yes. Amen. Gird your loins with truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember that, amen, that Jesus said, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. Heaven, amen, is on your mind. Yes. Because I'm telling you, you have to have a plan to get to your destination. Yes. And when Satan tries to defeat you, don't worry. Don't worry about what the enemy is trying to do or what his plans are to defeat you. Nay, in all these things, say it with me, we are more than conquerors because greater is he that's what? Than he that's in the world. 
and you can do what? All, All things through Christ. Who does what? Strengthen me. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Yeah. We are faith. faith. That's the risen life. Hallelujah. You rise above the challenges. You you overcome yes. every every obstacle, Amen. everything that gets in your way. Yes, Lord. When God lays out a plan, yes. He wants you to listen. You can plan to win or plan to fail. It's up to you. Amen. But when God's plans, His plans are all have already the seal of success. I'm gonna say it. When it's God's plan, it is already sealed Amen. for good success. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, we bless your righteous and holy name. With thanksgiving in our heart and in our mind, we lift your name up on high. We consider every challenge, every obstacle, every trial, every test, and we know that you've given us the ability to go forward. As a matter of fact, you're accelerating some of us right now because the enemy is trying to hold us back, and now we got to make up for time. Hallelujah! The enemy tried to hold us down and hold us back. But now, Lord, you're accelerating even the time that we're living because, Lord, you're making short, amen, the time that we're living in. So whatever we're going to do, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it with your favor attached to it. You're going to meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and you will fulfill every purpose. Come on and say these with me. With Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. I have been risen with you. I'm no longer bound. For I've been set free from every bondage. Lord God Almighty, I decree, I decree and declare, even this day, that I'm no longer down in my spirit, but I'm risen in you. You are the lifter up of my head, and I'm going forward, and I'm going to accomplish every plan, every goal, all my destiny for your glory. But this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. Lord, my faith is in you. The resurrected Christ. The resurrected Christ. And, because that, and because of that, I can do, I can do all, things all things through Christ. Through Christ. Lord, you're strengthening me. Lord, you're keeping me. You're, you're sustaining me. me. You're helping me. You're and I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. In Christ Jesus' name. Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and wave your hand to him. Come on and wave your hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord.
know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Come on and say it with me right now. which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had sub saying, this cup, is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine his self. And so let them eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Forgive yourself as well. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Well, <laughs> let's partake of the Lord. Everybody been served? Yeah. All right. For that which I received of the Lord, that which I delivered unto you, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed. See, he didn't let it stop him because somebody betrayed him. The same night in which he was betrayed. Amen. He took bread and we had given thanks he break it. Amen. And he said, take, eat. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat ye all of it. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It must not suffer long. Come on and say it with me. Hallelujah, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it must not suffer long. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Amen. Well, next Sunday is Mother's Day, and I want every mother to at least speak five minutes. Amen, Trina. Amen. I, amen. What does it mean to be a mother? And Trina, too. Amen. 
What does it mean to be a mother? Amen. And it's a good thing. And I want y'all, again, those who are listening by way of streaming, I want please come and be with us and be blessed, especially some of you, some of you may have lost your mother. Amen. And several of us have had. But we remember those great women of God, those mothers of Zion, those gatekeepers. My mama made us pinto beans with neck bones and onions. My daddy loved okra. And every Sunday she made a beef roast, fried chicken. Amen. Every Sunday. And my daddy always wanted something sweet. So she would make, uh, uh, most of the time it was a yellow cake. Y'all remember yellow cakes? With the chocolate frosting. And, if they, and mama didn't have, you know, she didn't have the cake. Daddy would make bread pudding. Y'all, anybody know about bread pudding or raisin? Think about your mother. Think about what you do as a mother. And know that mothers never stop loving you. Mothers, to me, represent the man misunderstood saying that his mother was his God, but no, she ain't your God, but her heart is close to God. You know why? Because she was always praying for you. My mother was always praying for me. So let's get ready to bless the Lord in our giving. But mothers, I want y'all to be ready. Amen. Amen. Be ready because the Lord is coming back and we want all of our children and children's children to be saved. Is that right? Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and you will serve. Yes, Agape, we love you. Happy Mother's Day for those who can't come. I truly want to see you in the house if you can. May the Lord keep you and bless you until we meet again. And remember always, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Be blessed. We have, uh, we have a